But it rained and rained and rained, and the light was terrible. You never knew what you were going to get, so consequently, I ground my teeth and said, I'm going to do a big still life. That's the only <laughs> thing. And uh, even then, it was so dark most of the time that I lost days working in my studio. Yeah. So that's the setup, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've taken that part of it. And on the wall over here is a map for it, mm -hmm. which uh, is very convenient because you work out all kinds of uh, things. And I've used golden section relationships uh, in the parts. Mm -hmm. I can't kind of point them out. After a while, they just become part of it. But the relationship of a a line divided so that the shortest to the long is the longest, so the sum of the two makes a, a, a sequence. And I make use of that. And if I'm going to do that kind of thing, I don't want to be involved with color, color value painting aspects. So that's where a map comes in handy in this general uh, setting up of the composition, mm -hmm. so which then can change afterwards. Mm -hmm. but Some might find the idea of a map is too constricting. You might say it, it's perhaps related to a cartoon and a fresco uh, in which you have worked out what you're going to do so that you then are free to uh, execute it in color. But it, I found it very, very useful to transfer from the tracing paper onto the canvas and to work out the basic composition and introduce mathematical relationships, arithmetic or geometric, which is coming down to a point, not on the canvas, which dirties up the canvas. So you approach the map very, very openly and freely as you do anything. I think the, uh, the great architect Nerby uh, said that, that, that he was an engineer, but you start with the whole feeling spontaneously at once to begin with, and that's the way you start any drawing or any painting, as far as I'm concerned. So I'll move those shapes around uh, very openly and arrive gradually at, at uh, the precise shape here, which I'm free to change later on if mm -hmm. I want. I mean, here I included the, the, uh, the light fixture. That's fine. And then the painting. I leave it out. Mm -hmm. And if I need to add forms or change uh, the composition, I'm free to do it. But this gives me a, a, a guide. Mm -hmm. And then I can go from here to a very light underpainting, right. a ghost of a underpainting, a very light. Problems over here because I'm going to knock down the tone. Mm -hmm. If you look at the painting upside down, which I will do right now if I may, I think you will not associate or be worried about the, what it is of the objects. It's easier to see the spatial relationships between the various parts, even in the unfinished part, this and that, where they are mm -hmm. uh, in space. 
It would be easier to have a whole underpainting, but that means I can't get as close with the color spots, the notes of color value, uh, as working on what is effectively the white of the canvas. So that's why I, at this stage of life, don't use uh, acrylic like watercolor or any other form of underpainting, which as the advantages, it all simplifies painting, but it doesn't allow for the kind of form and space that the directly observed color spots, as I call them, uh, give you. So what this painting is about is a space composition. And it's as much about a composition of the arrangement of the objects in space as is a raphael. That's what I took Larry to see the Perugino and the, and the, and the Raphael. Yeah, go ahead. So as a, a, in, in an area, in a, in a time, it, we're talking about flatness, you see, working on the flat canvas, what I'm doing here, and it shows in the video, it shows the space. I mean, it's developing. You have to see there's a lot of, what can, of the canvas that I'm going to be covering, but boy, is that behind that? I mean, do you see, you know where you are in space. So these are all arranged in space so that you can project yourself as if you were up above it, looking down on it. It has a three-dimensional effect, not just a form, but of, 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 the, of the objects existing in space. And where modernism is so full of basic tenet of flatness, do you see? I'm completely with them on the flatness of the canvas and the pieces of color on the flat surface and the rhythms on the flat surface. But this was bringing in dimension and it's bringing it in in a non-perspectival way. I'm not using this perspective grid. I'm not doing what the Renaissance did. I'm using multiple station points so that you can move around and looking at the, the canvas, which you have to do when you take a picture of the setup. You can't take it from one position. Mm -hmm. And I think that's big stuff. I mean, that when I'm talking about form and space, I'm talking about something, do you see? And I think it, 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 it's, it has to do with the subject, whether the subject is a, a pot and a pomegranate or an old chair or whatever it may be, or a human being. So here's a bunch of uh, tracing papers that you've yeah, used. Yeah, yeah, these are, these are, <coughs> these are some old, of them old paintings. I, oh, I, keep are... I keep the maps. I keep them. I like to have them up because they're a reference. They're very, very simplified. Mm -hmm. And I call them a map because, rather than a drawing because that's what they are. The line is an absolute of the same heaviness, you know. It's, a, it's, a, yeah. it's not a, a drawing. The drawing process of how high for how wide is all there, but it's reduced to a very simple state. So mm -hmm. when I'm working on a piece, I'll generally have the map up on a wall as I do here. All right, let's go outside. Okay, let's do it. We're going outside <clears throat> for a minute. 